in charge. <laughs> Treasure, make the budget. mental health. He'll be back. Jason won't be here until what, 9 30? Yeah, I don't care. Somewhere, you know, at the bottom of the page, you've got to account for a dollar figure. It's got to be. Well, the assessment is what you want to compare. As long yeah. as they're similar houses and similar assessments, you know, the taxes are going to differ from where they're at. You know, if it's in Joppa, the house is going to be more because their, their, tax their tax rate is higher. Their tax rate is higher. Well, that's what I'm, but yeah. I'm, I mean, if, if I'm in the same apple, mm -hmm. and you've got the same taxable value. Or if you're looking for comfort, something to yeah. you know, like it. I mean, it sounds to file a complaint. I mean, basically, it's not really filing a complaint and saying, hey, could you take a look at this? Yeah, if you find some that you feel are, are comparable assessed or you feel are assessed more than you, you know, that would be, you and take then, those. Yeah, and then you have to look that, you know, they were just recently assessed. And so, you know, here he's going over the county. So Somebody's got to be first. Where they hadn't got to the ones over by the window. You know, so kind of got to take that. But that's, that's why I was asking you about the dollar value at the bottom of this 2012 bill and this 2012 bill if they're both 100000 Okay, the tax rates, if you look at the tax rates, have probably changed. Even if they're in the same taxing body. You mean from 2012 to 2000, I mean 2012 to 2012. Oh, okay. Like two different this, tax bills, same year. Here's a house next to Franklin. Here's a house next to Unity. They're both in the county. They're mm -hmm. both in the unit one. Well, that's right. If Their they're both $100,000 houses, the, the tax bill should be the same. I mean, it's, yeah. at some point, at the bottom of that page, there's going to be, this is your taxable value. You look out, because what it'll do, it'll start out if you, do you have a tax bill with you? I chance? don't, but I can okay. get one real quick. Let me go get some. We'll see, y'all. We'll just sort of run through it. See how high their rate is. That's you've got to be chopping maple grove in the city of Chopper. Where is our rate at? All right, nine point nine. That's that's if you live in Chopper Maple Grove district and in the city of Chopper. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The county should be the 
just a little bit more. So if these houses were the same assessed value or not, their taxes, this would be a little bit higher because the rates are higher. See? Okay, go ahead. I mean, I, I apologize. No. I was going to, you take the total assessed value and then you take off any exemptions, like they've got a six which means you got to shift the decimal point to the left two places. Like you would take this 1463 multiplied by 0.093478. But if, if that's identical, and that's identical, and the rates are identical, it ought to come up with the same dollar amount. papers we can look at. Question that you sent me about the ministry in the jail. Yeah. We talked to me two six months ago. That we had a ministerial alliance, had a meeting about what we were going to do. There's so many DOC guidelines about the food that we brought in the jail and what we can serve. And John kind of, you know, you can bring certain things in. We're already getting church service two or three days a week, so I think census was the money that the Ministry of Alliance had we would be better spent on the rich ministries that they're using now. Like the town, the we got more than we could for them. We were feeding almost, mm -hmm. almost more than we could. So that's what we're doing. 
to that church service for them. And we're doing special things to them. But as far as using that money to come into the jail and feed the inmates, it was just a piece of Too many regulations. Yeah. We just couldn't bring, unless you went to a restaurant and paid for the food brought in. As I understand it, is Brookport can't hear the radios. Um, Jackson purchased too late, has checked them out. They went in, checked everything. Last week, County Fire had a problem, and while they were over, uh, while the radio shop was working on County Fire, they got a phone call from somebody, I believe, in Brookport that said they would have a radio. They've checked it out on multiple occasions, and everything appears to be working fine. Right? It's got power output, they receive okay. And what I did was I, I went through the audio, all of the radio conversations, the pages uh, that went out since the 1st of August, and I only found one incident where Dispatch tones were sent out, and there was, it was not followed by a voice message, and that wasn't even on the Joppa Brook Fort channel. Um, what I did yesterday, I went to Joppa, I went to Brook Fort, and I, I did some, some radio tests. Um, and, and what I did was uh, the, the radios that uh, Joppa Brook Fort have and then the radio that the ambulance service has is they're, they're what's called simplex. Um, that, that's just like point A to point B conversation. There's no repeater or no other devices in between. It's just like me picking up a radio and talking direct to you. So what I did was I did the testing on those simplex channels. Okay. And there are a couple of them. There's the, the one that one that Java Brookport Dispatch on their channel. Uh, there's the iReach, it's a statewide intergovernmental channel. And then there's the first responder channel where all of the ambulances and the like, city fire and whatever are dispatched on. So what I did, long story short, I went to Job, I went to Brookport, I took each one of those channels and I did a radio <coughs> test. And what I found was if, if I'm just sitting there with the radio, I have a stronger signal coming to me off of the Sheriff's Department. Uh, I also checked the Police Department, City PD, and I could hear them, but that signal, you know, it wasn't looking at the meter, it wasn't quite as strong which all of that makes sense because the tower here is taller than the one at the city PD, and it, it, it just makes sense. So when we went to iReach, they couldn't even hear me on the handheld on this portable radio at all, which again makes sense because those antennas are so much lower. And then when we went to the first responder channel, Again, the Sheriff's Department was stronger because that antenna is higher. But they could hear me, and they could copy me fine from the Sheriff's Department without any static. When I went to City PD, they could still hear me. I didn't receive them quite as well, but there was some static in my transmission to them, what they heard. And again, all that makes sense 
because that antenna is not as tall as the one in uh, at, at the sheriff's office, is this tower right here. Um, after listening to the audio, after having the radio shot, look at the antennas, check everything out, and also when they were here last week, uh, they did a radio test with Brookport as well. Okay. And when they did their radio test, everything was working. So, based on all of the audio that I've listened to, the fact that they check the transmitters, check the engines, check everything, the only thing that I can think of is what we've got is a problem that was been brought on by the FCC mandated narrow band. Uh, if you remember the first year, the FCC said that you had to narrow band your radio, so you had to take them from a 25 kilohertz down to well, I think what happened is the radios from here, City PD, wherever, to, to those outer areas, it was probably marginal. And I mean, we didn't have a lot to be proud of as far as the strength of the signal. Uh, but it, it was adequate. It was working. And I think what happened is when we've narrow banded those radios and we've taken them from the 25 kilohertz down to 12 and a half, effectively we've reduced output power because a lot of the power in this thing is in what they call the side band. So if you take something that's normally this wide and you shrink it, cut it in half, right, well then in essence you have reduced that that power level out. Um, I mean there's there's nothing that I'm aware of that is wrong with the radios um, and they're operating in what I would say their normal limits. I'd say they're operating the way that they should operate. With the changes that they've made, it's just that running a simplex channel on a handheld radio that far away with the radio kind of crunched up against your side, which has a tendency to attenuate the receive signal anyway, um, there are times that it's just not adequate. Well, when, God, I'm going to go back to the 80s. Used to, we would, the, all of the fire departments were on one channel. It was a low band, 33.7, 20, just a low frequency radio system. And all of the fire departments were on everybody talking. What happened was the, the low band, we ended up with the same problem that got now. You just didn't have the coverage. So what the county fire did was the county fire department purchased a repeater system. And they put the repeater in over here at the sheriff's office, got the antenna up on the tower, and they put that little white building in to house the repeater and air conditioner to keep it cool. All right. They also applied for an FCC license for Joppa and Brookport to share. Okay. So county fire licensed frequency to give Joppa Brookport. So here's yours channel, here's ours, and it's city fire now. So what happened is all the pages at three o'clock in the morning, I got a page for him that doesn't wake everybody else up. They just page that agency. Well, they gave that license to Joppa and Brookport and bought them the base stations and gave, gave them to Joppa Brookport. Uh, when the narrow banding issue came up, uh, the 911 board, we bought, we had to buy the new radio because we record all of those, all of, all of those pages, all of the, the transmissions we record. So what we did, the 911 board bought a radio, and basically what we did, we just replaced the one that the county had bought and gave to them with this one. They're using the transmitter on it. It was the same power output, the same everything that it was before the, the previous radio, with the exception that this one's been narrow band. It has that capability of being narrow band. So, I, I, I guess 
yeah, as far as I mean that, that I guess that's just you know that I mean that's the history on the radios as, as far as uh, anything being wrong with them or anything that I, I, I don't see. <coughs> what the answer? I'm sorry. What the answer? What do we need to do? Probably they if if there's if there's that if it's that bad, okay, if it's that bad, uh, and and I don't I mean I don't doubt that depending on where you're at. I mean if you're in a mobile home and workboard and you've got all the metal around you, you've got an antenna crowded up against you. I, I can see where you would miss it. Okay, um, as, to answer your question earlier, workboard doesn't have a tower, okay, for their, their fire, okay. My understanding is that the city PD, they've got an antenna there that has a radio hooked up to it that allows city hall and the police station to talk to the sheriff's department. But the only the only radio that, that the fire department has is the one that's here in this building. Of course, they got the ones in their trucks. I, if it was me, and you know, and there was a concern, and it's something that you know they're concerned about the public safety aspect of it, um, probably what they should do is is license a new frequency with the FCC and and put a put a repeater in, put a system in like county fire department. Uh, <clears throat> the only other thing, the only other option that they have, uh, would be in group court, they could put in, uh, okay, like Ted's cars have, uh, they've got a vehicular repeater, uh, so that, if that when they're out on a handheld, and they're out in the middle of nowhere, all they have to do is take their handheld and communicate back to their car, and then their car takes that received signal, and it amplifies it, it boosts it, because you're basically talking on a car radio, so it takes a Five watts to 50 watts with an antenna up on the roof, and that's how they come back and are able to communicate with their office going through the speed of their feet. If if they wanted to, the possibility was they could install a vehicular repeater, basically what Ted has in his cars. They could put that at say City Hall or the firehouse or whatever, and that way all they would have to do would be to talk from anywhere in Brookport to City Hall and then the radio at the City Hall or the firehouse would retransmit what they're saying in higher power so that they could hear them at the, at the Sheriff's Department. <clears throat> right now, if they call, they would call Ted and Ted would have to call the fire department here. Is that the way that would work? No, it, it's only if what it is, if there's a, let's say there's a fire or a medical call, okay, the, the 911 call, or it could be anything, it could be a cellular call, it could be somebody walking in the door saying, hey, there's a fire in the roof. Okay. Ted's dispatch puts that over the radio, it comes from here, there. Okay, so the issue is, it's depending on where the people are. Are they going to receive it? Exactly. That's the issue. Yes. Now they don't have any trouble when they're on their truck radios. When when they you know when they get out on their truck radio, they can communicate back and forth. But you're looking at a higher power level, with a better antenna stuck up on the roof of a vehicle. Is a better handheld quality radio helping? I, I don't think it. I don't think it will. The okay. It won't. It will help. Okay, if you go with a higher powered radio with a bigger antenna on the thing, it will help. But it probably won't help to the point that it will make a difference. You know, um, it, 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 it's, I don't know, the best way to explain it is, you know, it's like the TV, you know, the old TV antennas, how you can reach up and grab a hold of them, you know, when you touch them, they, you know, and you can wiggle them around, and you do this well it's basically the same thing with this it, it, it's the equivalent of you taking that tv antenna and wrapping your arm around it and 
it ended up in society. It's going to kill. It, it's going to kill the sick. Is there anything on our end that can boost or anything? Um, again, the only thing that would help with the transmit portion of it uh, would be to maybe put an amplifier on the thing to, to make that signal stronger. Uh, and then that would, that would require uh, you know, a license modification. And if you were going to go to that trouble to, to modify your license and spend the money on going through that process, you'd probably be better off to just go ahead and license and frequency and get you a repeater. I mean, they wouldn't have any trouble at all. They could, they could, they could license the repeater and put it there in Brookport, and that would solve the problem. That solves the problem because then what we would do is, it, it, we would just change the, the radio around there to function as a control station. And I know that we can talk from his tower to Brookport, you know, up to their repeater. It's been a while. Um, I'd say that it might cost three, four hundred dollars to the FCC, um, and then depending on the radio you put in, maybe fifteen hundred dollars for the, the radio. And if you could use a, you know, if you didn't have to build a tower. If you Put the antenna up on the top of a building that's already there, maybe a couple hundred of dollars. Oh, yeah, any, anywhere. Yeah. 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 And, and the issue there is it, it, it's not going to have to be all that tall. You know, it's like everything else. It's like his the higher the better. Okay. Um, but if we're trying to get in to eliminate some expense, then you would try to keep it off of the water tower because you're going to have to pay somebody to climb tower or whatever, if it was just on top of a building or something, or like a 40-foot tower, I think they've got a 40-foot tower at the, uh, at the firehouse now, you might even be able to just completely eliminate the antenna and tie the radio into the antenna that's there existing. So is that I know Ted, the Sheriff's Department, they dispatch, you know, for these people as a courtesy. Um, so they go with 3000 or less, they should be able to get that. Uh, yeah, it depends. And I mean, you could spend any amount of money you want to spend. I mean, you could put an antenna like, you know, like one of the antennas that's on the top of this tower. I mean, that's a high, that's a really a high efficiency antenna. What, what was that thing, Ted? Like $1,200? So, I mean, you could spend, and then if you want to put the feed line, like what? What's on this thing? Just the, the, the coax. You know that stuff. Is seven eighths inch. It's five six dollars a foot. So, you know, I mean, you could spend whatever amount of money you want to spend. Uh, <coughs> but you know, I'm thinking for your low end. You know, your low end. Yeah, probably three thousand. You can have everything in there. Probably give you a forty five watt repeater. And and they could probably, if you had to, they could probably find something. You know, they probably called me to, because I, whenever I went to both places, actually, it, it was kind of strange the way the thing worked, and I guess it's probably just maybe the way the antennas are oriented on the tower. But um, they were saying that they have asked the city to dispatch for them because they can hear the city. So it doesn't make sense because the city says oh, it makes absolutely no sense. And, and what we were doing during this testing period for both of them when we were trying to figure out what was going on because they were complaining. I took, I pulled his radio <coughs> his system off the air and swapped his stuff with 
the radio. So they had an antenna that was 180, set on top of a 180 foot tower. Okay? That when you're up on top of that tower, you can see Java, you can see Brooklyn, you know? And the antenna at the City PD is less than 100 feet. And they were saying that they could hear the city better. Hang on this down the hill at that. Yes, it's lower. I mean, the whole the elevation, elevation is, the whole is lower. lower. But the thing about it is, is I wasn't there, I didn't hear. The only thing that I can go by is the test that I did. And by just sitting there looking at the meter and what's coming up, his station, what was coming out of the Sheriff's Department, was so much better. And even when they were up at 180 feet, they still said it wasn't working. But we can take and put his antenna, you know, put his stuff on there, or, and we don't have the problem. I don't know why that happened. The only thing I can tell you is that the radios, what I've seen, what I've tested, and what the radio shop in Paducah has tested, there's nothing wrong. And even when, and, and Denise, when this thing came about here, however long ago it was, um, I guess last week, I think daily they've been doing radio tests where they set the tones off and they ask and, and, you know, and I don't think they, I, I don't think there's been a fail. I, I don't think they've ever had problems here, uh, you know, unless this goes back into one of these weather things where, you know, Weather is just right. You know, that that would affect it if it's if it's marginal. Well, thank you. Yeah. You know what? Six months we replaced everything we've done. Everything we have was right there. And even then, with the narrow band, we're still having to replace the car radios from time to time. So everything has to, some point in time. Everything has to be replaced. that big of a problem and it's not working for them, that would eliminate, that would eliminate the problem. They just purchase a repeater system, license it, put it there in their town, and then we'll just turn this one into a control station. Ted wants me to, whatever he wants. I'm here, you know, Ted invited me over. Well, that's the other thing. I, mean, I asked JD, I asked Denise, I asked Keith, the wires from the Brookwood Fire Department still contacted me. Or JD, Denise, or Keith. There's a note on the law for a radio there that says they want the city dispatch. They never complained to me about anything. And the first of all, might be happy to sit down with them and we can work it out. If they're going to have to come to us and let us know.